Hi there. Today, we're going to make a Fourier series calculator using our lab. So, I try to make this um, universal as much as possible. And I know that there's all still limitation in this. However, I believe that I, it can accommodate a variety of problems and also function to be um, converted into a Fourier series in terms of trigonometric. So I'm specifically referring to trigonometric Fourier series. Say for instance, we have x squared. See? And I've put this here, expression x squared. And I'm going to run this. This concept of Fourier series is a very important concept that every engineer should be aware of. This is important in astronomy and even outside of the Earth. Fourier series can be useful as well as in the human body. As you can see, there's a large variety and purpose of Fourier series. Interestingly, that Fourier series was once um, an ignored topic in the world of mathematics because it's a very time-consuming concept and then process and then you have to sum it with um, infinite values or infinite trigonometry to come up with the same form like this one you see in my test. As you can see, my program and then the Desmos exhibit the same. Oh my god! Wow! The only difference is just that it's not signed because the end parameter is set to 10 or the accuracy. If we increase this, our graph will be much more like um, what is shown in the desk. Okay? So in this video, I'm going to explain how I made this program. So let's begin. Okay. One thing to be aware of in the program that I wrote is that the formula used in this program is from the book of Erwin Krasik. So I want to give full credit to Erwin Krasik. I used his formula in Fourier series. Okay, and also all of this, as well as the first and second example, is taken from the book of Erwin Krasik. The third example is taken from the book of Leon Couch. Okay. So let's begin and dive in with Fourier series calculator. We're waging a war with Fourier series. Okay, so this is our arsenal. Okay, so let's begin. This calculator is divided into four parts the first part is the user input this is where you input all of the parameters such as the integration parameters and the different parameters used in the Fourier series the symbolic integration the evaluation and then the plotting Okay, so let's discuss it, this one by one. Okay. So, in the integration parameter, this is where you usually edit out or edit depending on the problem. So, this is the thing that you should be familiar of. Okay? Because... Okay. So, the upper... Would I'm when I say upper in my formula, I'm referring to this one, the upper limit for the integration. Okay. 
And when I say lower, I'm referring to this one. And when I say L, this one, I'm referring to L in the denominator. This one. And then this one. Okay? So do not be confused with the upper and then the lower. That's also an important concept. Okay. So the duration would be the the displaying parameters or the graphing parameters. If we wanted to display just from negative one to positive one x domain, so this is where you put it. So lower and then the upper. Okay? To give more flexibility to the user. And when I say accuracy, this is the end parameter in the formula. This one. Okay? Because we all know as we increase the n, the value of n, the accuracy also increases. Okay, so let's tackle next the process. It's pretty straightforward if you're familiar with the book of Erwin Krasik. Because as you can see here in my formula, 1 over 2L, this one, multiplied by the integration of f of x with respect to x and lower and then the upper boundary, as explained earlier. Next is the symbolic integration. Pay attention to the syntax used in this program because a sub n and then b sub n is declared as a symbolic variable. That's one. So that's why if you wanted to copy it in your own, I recommend to just copy it as is. However, if you're advanced or familiar with the syntax, you could also do some changes. Okay, so let's begin with a sub n. 1 over L, same with the formula integration of f of x, cosine, and then s of n is just um, this one. It is just a symbolic variable because we're going to use the symbolic variable in the evaluation. Okay? And then n pi over x. So s of n is just n divided by l x with respect to x and then lower and upper bound. The same concept is applied in b sub n. It's just that we use sine as presented in the formula. There's a good reason why I used it as a symbolic integration because if we wanted to know the um, solving part of this, we could easily click this and then we'll be presented by this. Okay. Same with the B or the B cell, which is zero. This okay, so that's the um, symbolic integration. Again, the duration is just the x parameter used in the graphing here. And then y sub 0 is important for this evaluation. Let's begin with the evaluation. The evaluation also follows the syntax and then process seen in the book of crazy. Okay, so let's just tackle this swiftly. So as you can see, a sub n is this one, and this one, and then and then cosine, and then b sub n here, sine here, okay. and then this is repeated dependent on this one. So as you can see, 
we're performing this one. So inside the loop, what we're doing is this one. Okay. And then after that, the program does this. We're just going to add the A of 0. A now. And then plotting. Okay. So let's, de let's test this example okay so let's begin okay so our first example is the example i've showed earlier or the number 11 in this case okay so let's check this out okay so as you can see we're just going to deal here in this part and we're just going to leave it as it okay okay so x squared this one so this is the upper the lower and then the upper boundary so as seen here so if you're given by the period then you have to divide it by two so in this case i divide it by two that's why it one okay and then the plotting parameters were only focused on the negative one to one that's why i just put this here and then let's say our accuracy becomes 20. okay say for instance you wanted to make it much more accurate than before just going to run this Okay, so this one. I've showed earlier that this is the same with the program in this. You could also just edit this for um, dependent on the accuracy that you wanted. And also this one. See? You could also check the variables such as the A and then the B, and then the A's of A now in this program, okay? Okay, so now let's move on with our second example. Our second example would be one minus X squared over four. Okay, so let's do that. This is a good example because so we just have to then let's go and run this um, while running I'm just going to show you the graph of the 1 over x squared over 4 so I just have to make some changes see because I did not or change the boundaries okay stop it get some help so it should be two negative two four divided by two would be two okay and then we wanted to see it from negative two then the l here represents lower and u represents up for the positive x axis okay or not necessarily positive as well. Okay, let's run this. Again, the program is like this. It's like, you know, an umbrella. Yeah, it looks like an umbrella. Okay. It's cool, just cool, into the mouth. <laughs> nice so as you can see it has the same you can see that it's exactly the same at negative 2 it is almost 0 okay and at 0 it has 1 okay okay 
So now, as you can see, this is the um, second example. And again, you could see the a sub n, b sub n, which is 0, and then the a sub e, no, just two sides. Okay, great. Alright, so that's it for um, in this video. So in this video, you've learned the syntax and how this program works. Okay. And also, in this video, we also learned how we can put this in our calculator and as well as the formula used in calculator. Okay? So, if you've learned in my video, hit up the thumbs up button and also um, subscribe for more video. You could just pause my video in order to, um, you know, 